everyone forgets that Zay Jones was the key to best ball drafts last year with the 175 ADP as the wide receiver 62. His three top eight finishes from week 12 on single-handedly carried fantasy teams to the final rounds. So we're all logically trying to find the next Zay Jones. Better put, a receiver who will stay on the field in two wide receiver sets and is available beyond pick 150. And I have a few favorites, including Alec Pierce. The Colts' depth chart around Pierce includes Michael Pittman, Isaiah McKenzie, a full-time slot receiver, and third-rounder Josh Downs, who ran 89% of his collegiate routes from the slot. Pierce will start in two wide sets because no one else can. And he's the ideal fit with Anthony Richardson, who has the strongest arm of any quarterback in this year's class. There's a reason why Pierce was only asked to run deep and fight for catches with a 16.8 yard average depth of target in college. He recorded an explosive 41 inch vertical at six foot three, 211 pounds at the combine. But that skill set carried over into his rookie year as one of only 44 players in the entire league with an average depth of target over 12. He's the team's only deep threat and will consistently be on the field. DJ Chark isn't guaranteed to start, but his only competition is Adam Thielen, who somehow got 25 million from the Panthers, and Jonathan Mingo, the first wide receiver drafted on day two. But there could be growing pains in year one for Mingo since he never recorded a 900-yard season in college and averaged just 3.2 catches per game over his four-year career. Whereas we know Chark is capable of providing spike weeks as a deep threat. In 11 full games with the Lions last year, 29% of Chark's targets came 20 yards downfield, 16th among all wide receivers, resulting in four top 24 finishes. His start-sit decisions for redraft leagues will be impossible to get right, but we don't have to worry about that in best ball. Isaiah Hodgins is the most obvious one, and his 171 ADP doesn't make sense. The Giants didn't add Hodgins until week 10, whenever he was cut by the Bills. But in their starting lineup from week 11 on, Hodgins led the Giants with nine red zone targets and five receiving touchdowns. And think about who the front office has signed during the offseason. Paris Campbell, Sterling Shepard, Jamison Crowder, Cole Beasley, and Wandell Robinson is returning from injury. All redundant from the slot. Hodgins will be starting across from Darius Slayton by default. I've talked about Devontae Parker in past videos because his ADP behind Tyquan Thornton's is just wrong. Even the Patriots think so, and giving Parker $14 million guaranteed and his most recent extension. We don't need to spend too much time here since it's questionable whether Thornton will be the team team's third receiver, let alone the second, keep drafting Parker. Let's be honest, Atlanta's target tree probably can't support two receivers, let alone three. But Mac Hollins will be on the field for an offense we expect to pass slightly more this year. In Marcus Mariota's 13 starts, the Falcons averaged 57 plays and 23 pass attempts per game. But in their last four games with Desmond Ritter, the team quietly averaged an increased 66 plays and 29 pass attempts weekly. Even a couple usable weeks would make Hollins a worthwhile pick in the last round. And finally, there's Michael Wilson. <laughs> Who? Wilson was actually a 19-year-old breakout with 670 receiving yards and five touchdowns with the Cardinals. That's the Stanford Cardinals. Then quietly got drafted on day two by the Cardinals. That's the Arizona Cardinals. He admittedly hasn't been the same player since he suffered a Jones fracture in 2020, registering nine drops to five touchdowns over the last three seasons. But with Marquise Brown standing five foot nine, 166 pounds, and Rondell Moore at 5'7", 181, Wilson will logically be on the field for being the prototypical archetype of an isolated receiver at 6'1", 216 pounds, in case you're looking for a last round pick. And remember, be a little bit kinder than what's required.